Let's record this again. And let's uh, share the screen. One of the things that people have found really very helpful and useful um, in terms of thinking about how to um, utilize digital media. So how to be digitally enabled and digitally connected. And these are five blended learning strategies that I simply adapted, like the concept of the playlist, simply adapted it to faith formation. So I'm gonna go right to left, so red over to the blue. Um, any program, any program, uh, uh, so you've got, uh, turn your, mute yourself, please. Check out your, make sure you're muted. Okay. Um, any program can have, any gather program can have online content. So that's, that's the kind of the basic strategy that you can add uh, digital content to any gathered program, retreat, presentation, et cetera. Um, right, we've got somebody with that. Hold on a second. I just want to make sure. Okay. Um, secondly, a gathered program can have online components. This is one of the most popular, it's probably the easiest thing to do in your building a network is take a gathered program and extend it. I'll talk about how to do that. The middle one in gold is the, is the flip classroom or the 50-50 model. In other words, it's online and it's gathered. And I'll give you some examples of how to do both of those in the same program. And then mostly online with regular interaction and gathered session is something that people access primarily online, but intermittently gather to talk about or reflect on or do, or do something together. And then fully online, there's just no end to the amount of content you can do that's fully online. All right, let's, let's look at some of these strategies. And think about all of these as, these are strategies that I can bake into designing my program, whatever program it is, and that becomes part of the network. So these are five strategies that simply will apply to everything we do from now on, because from now on, the way you'll think about programming is in a digital way, in a 21st century way, not in the old analog way. So gathered program use online content, that's pretty straightforward. Um, most of the contemporary educational uh, programming has that. Um, no, it's the wrong order, sorry, where's the, yeah. I got a slide that went missing. I'm sorry, there's a slide that's not here that was here when I did it this morning. So, so this is gathered using online content. Um, the example here is gathered, I want to give the second example, gathered program with online components. For some reason that slide's missing. Um, it looks like this. Any event or experience we do on campus at church can be extended. So digital content can extend and deepen that content. Our social media, so we got a Facebook group or just use Facebook or other social media for interaction, connection, communication, demonstration. And we could also offer that event in multiple formats. So we could offer it in new formats like the four week Lenten series that's now on video, that could be self-directed or it could be a small group program. Same program offered in three different formats. So the key is the church or event or program connects with our home or daily life and vice versa. And it works both ways, it's kind of a loop. So it's gathered with the online content. So connecting church programs or events with online content, here's just some of the examples. Sunday worship, any gathered program, an intergenerational program, a family program can have online content. You saw this in the example of the whole community website I showed. So they, people attend Sunday worship and the sermon and the theme from Sunday worship and the scriptures get extended throughout the month for adults, young adults, youth, and families online. Any mission trip, retreat experience, vacation Bible school, summer camp can be extended online. So here's an example of Sunday worship, then I'll show you a practical one. So if you think about what we do at Sunday worship on the left column, 
The question is, what do I want people and families to do in their daily and home life? And then the right column, what do I need to provide online that extends the Sunday worship experience so people can apply that and live it all week long? So here's an example. Uh, Breen Sipes is in, in, is in our uh, cohort two. She's taking course two right now. But she's designed a website, Tri Saints Lutheran. By the way, the link to this site is on course sites uh, for the, under the live presentation. All these will be. Um, so this is an example from the fourth Sunday back in Lent. And this is all based around her Sunday uh, worship, her preaching, and the scriptures. So up above, on the top of the page, if you missed worship, you can hear or sometimes see the Sunday worship service and sermon. And then underneath that, she has how to go deeper all week long. So in this case, this was Lent. She has weekly devotions, kids, families, youth, adults. She has daily Lenten devotions. She has a quiet, quiet Lent prayer resources. And if you scroll down, there'd be some other resources as well. She usually has a video on that page that relates to the sermon or the scripture readings. Um, so she's extending Sunday worship using a digital platform. This is a Sunday worship network, all ages, whole community. Another example. Uh, this is Cindy um, Cole at First Church, Simsbury, Connecticut. Um, Cindy took a workshop that I did, of course I did four or five years ago. And um, she is responsible for children and youth and families at her church. So this is what she does for preschool faith formation at home. So every month she has a theme. Uh, this theme was, this was our March theme, along with one other, God wants us to share with others. And these are preschool resources for preschoolers that moms and dads and aunts and uncles and grandmas and grandpas can use with them. It always includes a drawing activity, always includes story activities, always includes some um, online kinds of activities, video, a uh, storybook, and she has a page every month, just one page, that extends what they do at preschool and at worship on Sunday into the kids' lives. Um, this is the extension. This is the, can take any event and give it digital arms and legs so that people can access it all week long and go deeper in that experience. This is a little bit different example. So this is uh, Keith Anderson, who you probably will have as a teacher uh, uh, in the missional course. Uh, Keith uh, Anderson wrote the book, Digital Cathedral. Uh, he's, he's one of the pastors at Upper Dublin Lutheran Church in Pennsylvania, and they do a God on Tap. That's them enjoying the tap part of the God on Tap. Um, but it's, it's a digitally connected experience. So it's not just we gather. It's that Keith does a God on Tap blog, which gets them ready to come and, and experience the God on Tap face-to-face, -face, which, as well, uh, then can extend the learning. So this is, they're doing creativity. It's coming up tomorrow night. You want people to read this or use it after the experience. So um, he uses a blog as the, preparation for and the follow above a follow above a, a, a common experience so everything we do literally on campus or in this case in the pub um, can be extended digitally so it turns into that episode if you will turns into more learning at people's own pace 24 7 on demand available you can do this strategy with so much of what we do at church to give a life to what we're doing at church and, and make it just, uh, just expanding the possibilities. Um, the other thing is, if you do really great experiences at church, this is, this is, a, this is outreach to people. And I miss that. This really, it really looked good, but I can kind of get, you know, caught up a little bit in that. So I think something like um, this, for Sunday worship, or this for preschoolers. I think this is all outreach. I think this is all missional in one sense. 
um, because we're, we're, in, we're influencing the daily lives of people. And something like this, which is definitely a, a gathered experience, is simply enhanced by having the, the online piece to it. Online and gathered. So this is the 50-50. Um, if you're familiar with the Khan Academy, it's the advent of the flip classroom. Now, why is this possible? The flip classroom is possible because now you can access high quality content online and transform gathered experiences into reflection, demonstration, application, experiential, immersive environments. So you could flip Sunday school. You could flip confirmation programming because the flip part of it is that people can access either individually or in small groups or with their family, high quality video content, could also be podcasts, could also be print, that they can learn on their own at their own schedule. So when they come, it's highly experiential, interactive, reflective. So it transforms the role of the program that you can access content on your own and the most valuable thing are the relationships and experiences when we gather together. So I'll give you some ex examples. So here's the key. At the program, apply the content, create, practice, perform. That's only possible because at home in your daily life, you can explore the content in print, audio, video, and activities. So take what you used to teach in class, put it online. In class, transform it to be much more immersive in its experience. This is a pastor in Silver Lake Lutheran is in, Silverdale Lutheran is in Washington State. Bill Crouchy is the pastor. So he did two things. He did these short video introductions to the Christian faith for people who wanted to be, you know, were thinking about becoming a member or wanted to explore the Christian faith. Then he did longer ones, which a lot on the same topic. So he did kind of a short one and then a long one, let's say on Jesus, God, Holy Spirit, that kind of thing. And the, this Basics of the Christianity course that he did, when, when he does a new member course or basics course, he has them watch his video first, and it transforms the gathering that they have. So it's not him you know, lecturing for an hour and then a small group discussion. He presupposes you've watched the video. And so it's interactive, it's experiential, it's reflective. It's almost like theological reflection. Imagine doing this for new members. Imagine doing this for... Of people wanting to join the church or for the right of Christian initiation of adults, those who want to be initiated, um, you can flip this whole process, which makes the gathered time more targeted, more focused, more relational, more interactive. A number of churches, this is the Roman Catholic example, St. Edward the Confessor is out in California. Um, they built a custom designed church website, which this is part of, it's just high tech, it's great. But what they did was they went from a weekly confirmation program for 400 kids. It's a big church, okay, ninth and 10th grade, into a monthly program because they took the other three weeks and put it online. So you see on the right side, weekly online learning with an online session and online small group discussion. So they built that platform behind a firewall. So it's password protected. They attend the monthly sessions. They still have service projects, they still have youth group meetings, they still have their confirmation retreat each year. But what it's done is, because participation was so uneven and sporadic, that they went, they went to a model where people were, were more self-directed about their learning. Small groups, read on your own, watch the videos on your own. Attendance monthly is in the 95 plus percent. So the participation went way up, because they adapted to the reality that these are kids in Orange County, California. They have very busy lives. So is it as much learning? Yes. Is it as much gathered? Not really, because you're only gathering once a month. But those small group sessions that happen in an online format are also highly interactive and, and relational. So online and gathered. Here's another example. This is the Slate Project in Baltimore. Um, and this is a, both an online and face-to-face -face community. Um, and I'm just gonna, I wanna, I'd like to, to show you this, to see, just to watch how they thought about this. It's just so impressive. Um, here they are. No, that's the PowerPoint, I want the webs. So, you'll notice up here, let's see if I can get this right.
properties. So here's the community. And let's see if I can a little open note. So this is Slate Speak, and this is um, that's Amy Poehler, uh, who I don't think is a member of their community. But this is done online. So one way to connect with this new kind of community happens Thursday nights over Twitter. So you follow hashtag Slate Speak and you join the conversation. So this, I, I imagine this was what they were watching. Well, maybe not. Maybe that's not a video. Maybe that's just the, that's the promo. Pretty good promo. Um, and some guidelines for how to do it. But this faith formation happens over Twitter. But it's not the only thing they do. This one happens face to face. It's all hashtag though. So hashtag breaking bread. Our weekly face to face worship experience happens on Monday nights with a dinner lunch we call hashtag breaking bread. So one is online only with Twitter, but one is best done when we gather together. And so that's what we're doing here. And then wake up, word up. We need to reclaim the Bible. It's a story. Uh, Bible study is just, <laughs> it's just boring, but it doesn't have to be. And so what they have is a Dove Coat. They gather at, for Wake Up Word meets at Dove Coat Cafe. So this is not at church. This is out in the community. So you have a faith formation on Twitter, faith formation at church with Sunday worship, dinner, th dinner worship, and then you have Bible study at the cafe. You got to love this. And then Slate Reads. So uh, we're reading Stand Your Ground, Black by Justice, and we're reading it together. Here's the full schedule of the reading, and you're going to join Slate Reads to join the conversation online. So it's a great example of, um, of the blended 50-50 approach. Um, and very, as you might imagine, um, it's very um, uh, 40 and under-ish, um, not exclusively so, but... Then mostly online. Oh, I, I'll give you some examples of this and coming up. But mostly online is that the program is delivered online. So I love this parent webinar example. I've watched churches do it. Three webinars over three months and a parent gathering on the fourth month. So it's a nice, you know, you do kind of neat stuff like that. Um, online learning resources with a chance to gather. Uh, an online Bible study that you might do in Google Plus or Zoom like this or Skype. Um, so there's, there's an there's a actual physical face-to-face -face piece of that in the mostly online. So imagine we're doing a Bible study. We all gather together for the beginning of it. We do three or four weeks either on our own or in small groups. We come back together for another discussion. We do three or four, week, four weeks on our own online and come back for a final wrap-up. So it's mostly online uh, with some physical interaction. And then fully online. Well, there's a gazillion things that we could do with this because there's so much content. And you'll see that on the, on the familiesofthecenter.com and the seasonsofadultfaith.com websites I created. There's a, there's, there's a ton of great fully online content. Um, Lent in many churches is that part of people come for Ash Wednesday, then they go on sabbatical for 40 days and come back for Easter. So they miss Lent. Um, we can remedy that by what I'll call a fully online Lenten curriculum uh, that complements and supplements what we do in church life. That's the column on the left. That has a, has, real, has a real agenda for learning. That's the middle column of what people will be able to do, fasting, praying, serving, reading scriptures, et cetera. And then offers those online. You could do them as an individual, a small group, with your family, et cetera. So this coming Lent, don't complain about people that you see at Ash Wednesday and the Easter Sunday. Deal with it. On Ash Wednesday, introduce your 40-day Lenten curriculum. That's online. They can access them whenever they want. And then, of course, part of that online experience is the things you do at church, where you're inviting them to the things at church. You're extending the things you do at church into, the, into their online lives. So this is a fully online Lenten curriculum you'll have tons of content because there's so much Lenten content. Um, this would be a very easy uh, project to do. 
just some examples. NT right now is online, so his courses and the rest are all available online. Um, the Church Next, if you're not familiar with Church Next, this is Chris Yaw's project. Uh, at, go to Church Next just to see what he's doing. He's developed these online courses. He's got over 100 of these online courses that are short, modular learning, episodic, I would call it, uh, learning experiences on a whole range, Bible, scripture, personal, family, um, spirituality, that, um, that pe people can access or a church can build an online center, a learning center, which has these courses on it. So they're just two, uh, probably 200 examples of what's available in a fully online environment. So, quick review, just to go back, I forgot to move the slide over, but these become five ways to design programming in a digitally enabled, digitally connected way. So, uh, I just think these are become our bread and butter uh, formats that anything we do can utilize this continuum from just incorporating it into what we do to going fully online. Okay. So what do you do with all this? Now you've got all the tools. How do you design a faith formation network? So the question around teams pops. And I think that, that you need at least these five roles and we are thinking about a team to build a network, communicate a network, and design a network online. So it has that coordination, that's you. Um, but as we'll talk about at the beginning of live presentation three, you have to learn how, we have to curate. So we have to curate great digital resources. So for everybody who feels, oh, I'm just intimidated by digital stuff, you're probably a very good curator of faith formation content. So our faith formation and theological expertise helps curate great resources. There's a technical side to this, <coughs> excuse me, um, building a website, that kind of stuff. There are people in your community who you need to access, who can help you. Uh, they might be teenagers, they might be young adults, but who can help with some of the technical aspects of a website. I'm gonna recommend Weebly.com. You could also use Wix or Squarespace, which are, which are all designed for um, kind of user-friendly uh, uh, websites. Um, so there's a, there's, there's a design function for network. There's curating great content experiences in network. There's a technical aspect of building a, a website. The marketing, and I don't really mean, I mean marketing in terms of, of promotion, getting the word out. And then there's the communication piece. Um, this is, could be email, mar email marketing or communication, constant contact, MailChimp, texting, a whole variety of things. So what I've done is, this is the network design process. You are not gonna do this whole process, so keep breathing with me, all right? So don't, don't panic, all right? All we're doing is a model, an example of how to do this. This is all described in chapter four of the Reimagining book, so I'm not going to bore you with explaining a design process, but I am gonna explain what the homework, you know, what the project assignment is for the second half of the course. Real quick. If I was doing this in a church and starting from scratch, yes, I would research my target audience and identify needs, whether it's families, teens, young adults, middle adults, older adults, intergenerational, because you want to build your network around the needs of people. Okay? For our exercise, you're going to use your team and your own experience to identify needs. You revise. This is only version one you'll revise it and update it as you do research in the next four courses, okay? So right now, we just wanna practice the designing piece. Things will change and modify as you add new content and new needs. But we'd research them, we build the network around those needs, and then we generate ideas for the network, which includes the current programming you're doing, as well as new programming, which can be small group, large group, et cetera. All the things I just talked about can be online or on campus, and always we extend any gathered physical program into the We plan a network season of programming. 
So we're going to think about three, ne- three seasons, September to January, January to May, May to September. Okay. Now you can modify those, and, but you can't update a website monthly. In, so I, when you're thinking about programming, think about programming three seasons. And yes, I do program the summer because you do have things that go on in the summer, even if most of my offerings are fully online. Okay. But you're, if you're doing vacation Bible school and you're doing a network for families, you're going to want to extend that. Or people go to camp. You're going to want to provide things when they go on vacation, all that kind of stuff, because you can now do that. And then in task five, you build the digital platform. So you, you don't start by building the website. The website is the platform on which the network resides. So people say, I want to build my network. I say, well, that's fine. You want to build your, I want to build my website. I say, that's fine. What are you going to put on it? Okay, because it's what we've learned about website design is that style means something. It's got to be neat. It's got to look attractive and the rest. But people keep coming back for good content. So you build a digital platform after you built the network. And then you'll test the seasonal plan with your target audience. So this is another way of doing task one, research. So if I was designing something for families, I'd want to gather a half dozen, 10, 12 parents and say, here's what we're thinking. Show them, let them mess around with the website, uh, let them see what's inside, um, let them use it for a couple of months as my pilot, you know, so that moves into task seven, and then evaluate it. So oftentimes when we do church programming, we want to reach everybody all at the same time. And I'm going to suggest you think about this as I'm going to create something, I'll test it with my audience, I'll launch it with a small subgroup and focus on them. If more, than, if more people participate, that's great in my family website. Oh, that's great. But maybe a dozen or 20 people, I'm really focused on getting their feedback. And then I evaluate at the end of the first season, I make modifications, add new programming, and I start a, a, an, an every four-month process of launch, experience, evaluate, design the next season. Um, that's kind of where you want to go. You might move to a two-season format. That's fine. You know, you do what works, but, but those are the nine essential tasks, okay? And I, present, I developed this PowerPoint so you could use this as your planning tool. All right, so there's just a PowerPoint that says design process, okay? And it has these kinds of instructions. You're not going to gather demographic information. You're not going to do this one for our purposes now. But you will do this as we go through the next four courses. Different audiences. So you will have to choose an audience. Okay. So it could be the whole community or it could be a specific group within it. You can merge some of these adult stages together. So you pick the one that is either your responsibility or in your church might be the area of greatest need. I always tell people, if you're thinking about what should I try this out on where I'll get no resistance, families with children zero to five, you probably don't have a lot going on there, and everybody over 20 years old. I mean, adult faith formation in most churches is not their strongest suit. And so you could pick where you want to. Maybe it's going to go to a mature adult, people in their mid-50s and up. Okay. It's just, it's just to test this out. It's, it's your chance to begin to build that. And then you're going to add to that website as we go through the program uh, and build your networks. So pick an audience you want to focus on. The audience can be your responsibility. Or if you're looking more broadly than that, it could be something that you're simply not doing and you want to test this approach with an audience you're not reaching at all. And that really lowers resistance um, because there's nothing going on. This just walks through how to compile the research, do all that kind of stuff. Just know it's here and it's in the book. So, and then you're gonna find themes. So I'm gonna ask you, let's say I chose mature adults. With my team, we're gonna, we're gonna identify some sample themes or needs my adults have. I, by the way, I did that with this list. It's just a generic list, but it's a good list of things that, you know, I know would be helpful for adults. I don't know which adults would be helpful for, but I know in, in general it would be helpful. Um, brainstorm those themes because you're going to want to use those themes to build your network. And then design it. The, the combination of themes with um, the eight faith-forming processes that's what builds the network. 
whether it's adult faith formation, those big themes, and underneath, like scripture enrichment, I'll have particular things about spirituality at midlife, for example, um, under grandparents, um, how to share faith with your grandchildren, maybe under the life issues, how to care for an aging parent, those kinds of things. So you, these big categories, the eight faith forming processes, they get personalized around the needs of your target audience. I'll show you more you know, explicitly what that looks like. Families the same way. So if I looked at parents, I put questions parents have, concerns, key, key research that I want. So if I took on family faith formation, I'd start sketching this out, putting together, knowing in the next course I've got intergenerational. This, by the way, this would be true of adults too. I've got, I'll add intergenerational content. In the family course, I'll add all kinds of content to this. So you're gonna keep building this, that's all I wanna say. Could be adolescence. So you know that you're gonna, in course uh, four, the life cycle course, we're gonna focus on that. But between now and then, I can begin to add content, I can make, build family content, intergenerational content, I can add my current programming to this, et cetera. So you're building your network. Generating program ideas, really pretty simple. And what you're gonna do is for every content area, you're gonna have needs, and then you're gonna have your current programs and some intergenerational connection. So I, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on how to do this because it's all in the PowerPoint and it's in the book. The last one though, so when I'm thinking about programming, and these are just kind of your general things. Six, use multiple environments. Seven, use digitally enabled strategies. These are just some brainstorming ideas. And then that's my three seasons. So pick which season you want to begin. And it could be just generic. I'm going to build a generic one, and then when I actually get to implement it, I'll focus on a season. That's fine. In fact, most people have chosen that approach. And then you design a network season. So you add currently scheduled programming. You make sure you use your digital strategies. You select some new programming. You develop playlists, and then a final version of the plan that you can test out or implement. And that's a, these, they're simple worksheets throughout the book to you can use if you choose to. And then playlists of content. So that you've seen this one on spiritual practices already. I'm going to show you a couple of those in a moment. Here's a family one, and this was a, kind of a summer playlist. Um, uh, the 12 week summer Bible reading plan. I didn't, I didn't create any of this content. That 12 week summer plan um, uh, was created by Sparkhouse as a free resource to families. So I linked to it. The Old Testament Bible here is, was Jelly Telly, the five minute devotionals, a link to that. Um, all those activities on learning the Christian tradition, all those are from Bible of Faith at Home. Uh, praying, there was all kinds of meal prayers in a buildfaith.org blog put those on here. And the service ones, I simply used existing service opportunities and put them in. So I've got a nice four month package of resources that families can choose from. I'll show you what this looks like online. And then you build digital platform. You have a couple options here. I use Weebly. I can really help you with that. Wix and Squarespace are very similar in that they're um, drag and drop website builders. WordPress.org or .com. .com has actually got, it's a little more drag and drop. So I'd say WordPress.com. You can build it on WordPress as well. Um, if you know some you know, programming, WordPress is great. There's all kinds of resources. If not, stick with Weebly, Wix, or Squarespace. If you've got a newer church website, you can build this on your church website. So you, any format you want. Um, I like to build it on Weebly to start, kind of test it out before I put it on my church website so we can always easily cut and paste uh, stuff. Some of the things you need to do, and I'll review these, and they're in the web. You need to choose a domain name. That's really easy on Weebly because you can choose your name. So let's say I was Holy Trinity Church. So I'm Holy Trinity Families. And they'll give me a free domain name, holytrinityfamilies.weebly.com. And that'll be part of the sign up. So no going in 
the target audience, and what a name might be. Um, you want a mobile responsive website. All the newest ones on Wix, Squarespace, or Weebly are mobile responsive, which means they automatically size themselves for a mobile device, either tablet or phone. You can do any extra work, the template automatically adjusts to that. Then you create your primary navigation system, the main menu, I'll show you how to do that. Build each web page to incorporate all your program's activities and make sure you design it for your target audience. So you have to write it and put photos that are really your target audience. Um, realize you're gonna wrap the website with social media. So I always get people saying, well, how do we win interaction on the website? You don't. That's what you use Facebook and Twitter. Just like the Slate project, they used uh, Twitter. I could have used Facebook. So I have an adult group and uh, they, wanna, they wanna do adult Bible study. So I set up a Facebook group for them. Another adult group is a book group. So I set up a book group on Facebook for them. So use social media for the interaction, discussion, and the rest. The website is kind of the platform with the content and the experiences to access that. So people say, how do I drive people to the website? My thing is, how do I get people to use the website so that they can interact in physical or online spaces with social media? So these two go together. Uh, they're not separate. A couple of things uh, that Steve Krug, this is a great book, by the way. If you're going to do more web design, pick up a copy of this. His first point is, when you're designing a website, don't make the user think. Make the web page self-explanatory, uh, easy to understand, clear choices, clickable items, simple search. People don't read web pages closely. They scan. So designed for scanning rather than reading. So why are photos so helpful? Because photos can be a way that to catch people's eyes so they land and read something. But so don't pack it with lots of words because they're simply not gonna read them. Clear visual hierarchy, that's your menu system, main menu, sub menus. They can very clear how to navigate the site. Always have a home page. I mean, some people like on the menu, some people stop at the home page on the menu. People know how to get back to where the main page is. Um, omit needless words, well that's always good just for writing, period. The home page needs, design, needs the greatest design care to convey site identity. So on the home page, what's this all about? What will I find inside? And who are you? Why would I trust you? And then promote goodwill and make the typical task easy to do. Um, backspace to where I'm gonna go. Um, just think about all the things you hate about a website. Well, don't make sure, make sure your website doesn't do those things. You wanna test and plan it. These are some instructions for doing that. Then you launch it. That'll come eventually. And then you promote it. The thing I talk about in terms of promotion, people will wanna do extravagant promotion. And the key is, if I can, like let's say a family website. If I get a half dozen, 10 parents who really like the website, all of those parents are connected. So friends have friends that they communicate with, that they connect with. And those friends have friends. So use the network approach to, to life, is that people are connected to people who are connected to people. So I may not be, be able to influence the people in green or gold, but I can influence the people in, in orange. Um, so I can influence the people in close, they influence others. Which is why I tell people, don't complain about the fact you have grandparents every week at Sunday worship. Because those grandparents are connected to children and grandchildren that can utilize that network wherever they are in the country or the world. So make grandparents faith formers and faith connectors to their children and grandchildren. That's the way a social network works. That's the way Facebook works. We like people. You know, that's the same principle. Okay. Curating, we'll talk about the beginning of live presentation three, how to curate content. You don't, have, you don't have to worry about that. You have no content yet. So let me stop. 
just questions in general before I do some examples of how people put together a network and a digital platform. Ah, uh, the afternoon has hit. Questions, thoughts? Just really a dumb question, but um, so our church has a website and I decide to add all my little thingies there. I mean, is, do you have to have a certain size website or any of that? You know, do you have to have 9,000 gigs, you know, any of that? Stuff? Well, websites in the cloud, there's no storage problem. No storage problem, okay. Um, how new is the website? Um, it's quite new. Okay. <laughs> I mean, in, in the last um, four months or so, I mean, I, yeah, I, I, at church all the time, I do not go to our website. So, but the one time I did it, it's been up for about four months. So what, what you can do, Janice, is you can use something like Weebly to develop what I call a test site. Uh -huh. So before you mess around with the church website, which is already live, right. you, can, you can mess around with a practice site to show people what it could look like. Okay. Yep. If it's built on like a WordPress platform or some kind of open source platform, that you can add video content and audio podcasts and all that. If you can do all that stuff, then, it, then you, all you have to do is work the menu system. I'll show you St. Paul's in Duluth. They've got one site with the face formation content built in. Mm -hmm. So it's just a matter of how you, people can get to it easily. They, they're right. not going to click for a half hour to get to the content. It's got to yeah, be there to right. click. That all the time. Yeah. That you go to websites and you cannot find anything. Right. So you know, you if, you're, if your site is kind of clogged with um, minutes from the last council meeting and all yeah. that kind of stuff, stuff, then it's not a good faith formation site. Right. However, if the site's meant to be invitational, attractional, uh, uh, a, a site where people are going to want to come to see what the church is doing, then that's a good site. Mm hmm Right. But I would build one on Weebly. It's free. You can build five pages out. You can play around with it, mess around with it. I build that out just to see what it looks like. Yeah. So you can have a conversation with people at church about what you want to accomplish. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Um, I have a, a quick question. Um, in doing this, this is something that I've actually started to think about doing um, recently myself anyway. Um, would you suggest that you start your and connect it to the church website or have it as part of the church website? Because I'm wondering if it's separate, it might be more with it as just website. Um, Amanda, here's a suggestion. Um, Let's say who you, who you want to who would you like to design a network around? What target audience? That question. My my internet's kind of blah. It's okay. But who who would it be? What what target audience? Oh, would be probably mostly for my middle and high school youth. Okay, perfect. So so we're designing one for for adolescents, teenagers. Okay. If I want it to really look youthy <laughs> and I want them to do things with me on it, then the church website is not the place to do that. Right. I, want to, I, want to have a, I want to have a link on the church website. I want to have a youth page on the church website. Here's all we're doing with kids. Here's our events. All kinds of, click here for our youth website. Okay. Um, but I'm not going to get the, the church website to look youthy. I'm just not. Okay. Just the individual. So if you're working with more than one um, demographic, so to speak, um, you'd want to create one for each of those demographics to be able to tailor the look even to what you're looking for. And some, some church websites are built on platforms that allow you to custom design each page with its own photos, its own look and feel within the same theme. Okay. Now, some are not. Some, it, it's got, every page has to look the same. Yeah, I don't. Uh, our our current church website, we kind of reworked it a while ago 
um, several years ago and because it was totally unusable before, totally. And there was only one person who knew how to work it and that person left and so it hadn't been updated <laughs> in years. Yeah. Um, so uh, we just got to the point where we have someone and I, and I actually have a really amazing lady who's, who's doing this for the church. Um, she enjoys this kind of thing for some reason. But, um, you know, I think she'd be able to help me do that because I don't think our church website is able to do something like that. Yeah. So I would say develop a pilot practice website and then see how that connects to the broader church. Okay. Because right now it, people, wouldn't, people wouldn't know why you wouldn't do it on the church website. Once you design it, they'll say, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, no, don't put that on the church website. They see it. You got, they got to touch it in a sense. Yeah. Yeah. Other questions? And I'll, get, I'll show you some examples and show you how people are trying to put this together. All right. You will have questions before we finish because I'll make sure you do. Um, okay. So let's go online. Uh, it's right here. And we'll take Slate off. And so, let's just, let me just do this, the Seasons of Adult Faith Formation one. So you get a little bit of a sense of, this is built on Weebly, okay? Um, that's my own picture. You can change pictures, swap pictures out. So here's, here's Weebly.com. So if you want to just try a sample one for free, Weebly's fine. Wix.com or Squarespace.com, all one word. So you, you simply would just sign up, get a free account. If I do that, it'll just send me to my website. Um, they have pre-designed themes. You can do any design work. You just pick a theme, then you add your own photos and design your menu systems. It's drag and drop. This is the, this is the editor's menu. And you do exactly what they just did. Uh, it's mobile responsive, meaning you're able to, it, it flips back and forth between a computer, laptop, to a, a mobile device. You're not worried about a store. You know, you're not going to hire somebody because you have no money. So they have apps. They offer personalized domains, but you don't need to do that. You just simply take the Weebly domain and you'll put your name, whatever it is, before .weebly.com. So when you see there, it say, it'll say choose three options and you choose the option that Weebly gives you a domain. It's free. Don't pay money. Okay. So that's Weebly. 40 million people, not bad. Wix is big. Squarespace is big. So it's just a matter of which one of those you want. And so here's how I built the network and that's, and I built the website to, to house, if you will, to be a context for it. So each one of these are big circles from my design work. So you start on paper. You start with, the, you start with what, what, are my, what, are my, what are my network themes or content areas going to be? Okay. You start there first. Um, once you've established those, those become your menus. And you'll notice I, I don't have any sub-menus. Some menus are real, I do have one. What's this one? What's the one? Oh, Lent, all right. But you don't want too many submenus because on a mobile device like a phone, submenus are a real problem to click on. So I've tried to put everything on a single page. People don't mind scrolling pages anymore. So it, because on a mobile device, all you do is scroll. Um, so these are my big categories for adults. So in something like, oh, let's do spiritual life. So in the spiritual enrichment section, I have my five session weekly program, which I would do in a month when I'm not doing faith enrichment or scripture. It's like, so don't program against yourself calendar wise. So I, I just have two books here. One would be my general book. One would be something for the Catholics. Um, so these are the five topics. I'm going to invite five presenters. I can register people online. It's really pretty simple. So as you're going through this, just make some questions for the, for the live presentation three of things, how to do some designing, and I'll help you with that because 
do a registration form is pretty simple. And because I'm recording it, they can watch the presentation online after the session. So here's my first offering. And I've curated people to do that. I've curated resources for spiritual practices. Now these are actually on the website because I wrote them. So that's why they're here. But normally, as you'll see in a minute, I link to the activity. I don't, you can't put it on your website because you'll violate the copyright. So you simply link to it where it resides on other people's website. So my first offering is a group or individual, or it could be a small group if I write a little study guide for it. This is just going deeper. Here's a book study group. Mature, these adults like, you know, these, these are my mature adults, my midlife adults. Um, so they can do a book group at church. I don't know if this link actually, yeah, here we go. So I give them four times. They're probably bad for most people, but if I get, a, this is the contact form. So they sign up and I can, I can just organize some groups and, and then either I can facilitate or I could find a host to facilitate. They can host their own group. I'll deliver the book and the study guide. And they can do a book group online, like we're doing this course on Zoom. You could do it on any web conferencing. Richard Rohr did a little presentation, introduced people to it. So it's a book group, small group activity for people who like book groups. This is simply explore prayer practice. Every one of these, I won't start clicking, but every one of these link to a website where the activity resides. So no copyright infringement, they're all just links to where the activity is, but I make sure that I drop in a description so they'll click on it, they wanna know what it is. They're not gonna go searching for stuff. Uh, and it goes right to the activity. And no, no, no searching, no Google, I've already curated it and provided it, and, and I've been a matchmaker between, if you wanna know more about Lexio Divina, here's the place to go. I have daily devotional resources as well. So these are on your own resources. Then there's a course. So I can offer them a spirituality course with a spiritual guide. This is all on the website, spiritualityandpractice.com. There's three of them. They cost $49.95. Here's the nice thing about the digital world. If three people took a course, oh, well, three people took a course each, it's worth putting it up there. It didn't cost me anything except the time just to design this. This artwork came from the website. These descriptions came from their website. It's a great website with online courses and spirituality resources. It's just remarkable. And the last one, which I always leave up here, is from Creighton University, a Jesuit university, where they have an online uh, retreat experience uh, for, um, you know, based around the Ignatian exercises. So it's great. And it's free. So people who want this, they could pay for it. The rest, these are all free. These are all free. They have to buy the book. These are free. They have to buy the book. And if you're charging anything for the virtual practices course. So I've programmed this area. And that could be, for example, that could be my, no, my October offerings, this October. And scripture could be my November offerings. So we're gonna get ready for the new gospel cycle, which will be the gospel of Matthew. And I've given people six ways to get engaged with the gospel of Matthew because the new lectionary beginning first Sunday of Advent will be the gospel of Matthew. Gospel series, small group. And you'll notice pretty similar format. I have my gospel presentation series just three times. Then I have small group Bible study. Those are just a variety of different ones. Online course, Dale Martin at Yale has an online course for free. And what I've done, I've actually just curated the parts of the program, it's all topical, that are on Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Now, I wouldn't offer all of this, by the way. All you'd see would be Matthew if we're in the Matthew year. I'll offer Mark in the Mark year and Luke in the Luke year. They could do a self-study by going to the Enter the Bible website at Luther Seminary, I can make this link just to the page with the Gospel of Matthew. The Version Bible, if they don't have it, download it. There's Gospel reading plans. I would link to a Gospel of Matthew reading plan. 
You notice I haven't created anything yet. Bible devotions, these are all just individual links. So this is scripture enrichment without going, without designing anything myself, except for curating three people to present on the Gospel of Matthew. So what, yes. I'm sorry, what you're saying is as long as you are only information and you're not um, just putting it on your whatever page you're working on, do you need any other, um, you know, do you need to get permission? No. The beauty of the web is linking is the way the web works. So now here I'm not linking to anything, all right? Here they'll have to buy the book. Here I'm linking to a free online course. Here I'm linking to a free website from Luther Seminary. Here I'm linking to a free version of the Bible and free gospel plans. But you notice, none of that stuff, none of that content resides on my website. I've curated good stuff, and I put the links, and I've explained why they should go to follow this link. All these links here, all the content still resides on the site where who created it. So no copyright infringement. You always can link to that content. Always. Okay. People want you to. Okay. Uh, the way you move up the Google ranking to get to the first page is links. So it will link to you and they go to your site. Boom. Analytics, you go up a notch. So you'll see throughout this, most of the content is content that I've linked to, but I have curated it to match the needs I discovered and to match my categories. And then I've tried to offer different environments. So I've offered a large group, I've offered a small group, I've offered an on your own or small group. I've offered an on your own and on your own and more on your own. It's easy to offer the on your own stuff because all, the, all of this is just sitting there ready to be used. People create this content and put it online for free because they want you to use it. They don't want you to steal it. They want you to use it and use it means link people to our website. That's what I'm doing. So I have, I have all these people working for me, in a sense, uh, creating content. So each of these is the same. Sunday worship, you know what I've done here. I've simply extended Sunday worship. You've seen spiritual life service. This is a great example of just capturing what's already going on. So build a house with habitat. There's already a serve the community day. Partner with other churches and community organizations. Donors Choose is this wonderful website that sponsors education of children. Assemble Promise Packs Refugees is a, is a world vision project. So I'm just connecting the things that are already there. Everyone's going to love me for doing this. And then I wrote this so it was easy to put this session up here so they could learn more about transforming the world. This is a Catholic campaign for human development. There's a great video on poverty in the United States. So you see how I've turned this page into a learning page? Do something. Explore why we do it. Explore what's going on in the world. All this content is just all, each of these boxes is a button that links to where you can watch the video or get the interactive map. So this is just a picture. John? This one uses community resources. Yes. I have a question, just um, kind of thinking this through. Mm -hmm. um, if you could just review what tasks this covers. There was that task list, and you mentioned we didn't have to do it all. Right. Um, and then just on average, um, students from previous years, how much time are they spending on, on these sites? Just so I could kind of plot and plan what my weeks are going to be looking like. So here's number one. In, in the network design process, you're going to identify what I'll call generic needs that come out of your own experience around a target audience. So here, these are, these are my, gen, my generic categories. These are the eight faith-forming processes, basically. 
And what I put under those is things that I think relate to the adult experience. So I have a just for grandparents section, all kinds of great activities just for parents. Because I, because I know parents will go here and, they, and they're concerned about the faith formation of their kids. A lot of parents, a, a lot of pe- uh, adults in this age are caring for their own parents. So I have some caregiver resources. So I started with these big categories. I looked at how those big categories connected to things going on in the lives and interests of adults. And then I went looking for content to put up there. Now, you're not gonna start with eight menu items and all this content. I mean, you're not gonna start with all of this. Pick three or four to build out. So let's, let's look at what people have actually done. Not me, but other people. So that's, uh, I, I showed you Tri Saints Lutheran. This is Breen Sipes worship page. So this is the one getting ready for, well, what was just happened. This was this past Sunday. So she designed, she redesigns, this, adds this content every week to this one page. So this is First United Methodist Church in Lakeland, Florida. What a complex. Ugh. So one of, one of our class, one of our students um, developed this and his focus is on adults right now. So it's adult faith formation. This, by putting this picture here, he keeps it connected to the church website, so he does it visually. So Warren's got some content already listed, but these are things he's already doing. So this first step was, what can I pull together that I'm already doing? Okay. Then he went and got, this is already on the schedule, okay? So this is kind of, something he could launch in January. He created this back in the summer. You know, the next step he'll do is he'll start adding some digital only content. But this was to aggregate all the stuff he already was doing. Now he's got some digital only, daily Bible study resources. So how many of these you build out? Build, identify all of them. You don't have to program all of them for, our, for the class assignment. You can just keep on working on it. So when is a good time to introduce seasons? Well, you can introduce it in Advent, but that's too quick for us. You can introduce it in Lent. Make that your first season. You see what he's done here. He's done a great job with this, by the way. This is terrific. In just really about five, six weeks. Notice how, remember I said before that people don't read, they scan. Look at them, the, every one of these photos, every one of these photos is, is a scan. So you can stop at the photo and it points you to something. Is somebody asking a question who just has their mic on? Okay, so that's, that's, that's an example. Here's another example. A, dr- a big drywood Lutheran church. On the front page of playlists. I love this, by the way, because, well, I love the idea. And they built this out. You have access to all of these links, by the way. And so if I was to click on, let's just go Wednesday with the word, it's clickable, there it is. This is what drives people to a website and helps them navigate. Real live pictures of people at your church. It's fine to have children, there's no names and it's a group shot. Here's all the things they're doing. All these are buttons to take your places. So you have plenty of these examples to look at. Let's do another one. Emmanuel Families. Now, all they did was just build out basically the menus right now. And then they'll start adding content 
as they go through the next course. So you can do a little more than this if you want, which I would recommend. Here's, um, oh, what church is this? This is uh, First Church Greenwich. They focused on family faith journeys. And they're building out content slowly around. So the key is once you build this menu out, then you start looking for the content and experiences in each of those categories. And you notice they built these sub menus. They're all the same milestones, 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 worship resources, just for parents, Bible basics, faith in action. This is First Church, First Time Church, Madison. Worship, children, preteen, teens, parents. So it's a family, you know, it, it's faith formation from zero to 20, including their parents. Um, the picture keeps it identified with the church, but it's not the church website. This is Breen Sipes uh, Feed My Faith website that she's going to be working on. So she's building this out with all kinds of resources. This is Trinity Youth. See what I mean? This wouldn't be your typical picture on the, on the church page, all right? But it brings the kids to the site. Things that kids are doing. Photos are not a problem, no names. And she has middle school content, high school content, parent content. Oh, that's church next. So it's possible. People created those in, well, between this session and the live and, and our final live presentation uh, for number three. Um, the, the, all the ones I showed you are built on, on a word on, on, on Weebly. Um, some bought a subscription and some just built out five pages, which you're able to get for free. And you get add content to those pages. Um, the key is design the network, build those big areas, identify needs in those areas, identify what you're already offering in those areas, and then begin to build the, the digital platform around it. And then you're off and running. Use those digital strategies. How do I connect it? How do I extend it? How do I deepen their experience of this? How could I perhaps flip the classroom or flip the program? You're going to live into that for the next year. So, I don't expect it to be complete on December 14th or 15th when we gather, just to have the shell, but start to put some programming as you saw those examples. Um, does that help? You look shell-shocked. Don't be shell-shocked. I think that's really helpful. Um, I have a question about the analytics behind it. Do you, yes. you tend to look to see which pages people are visiting? Yes. What you can do to enhance the pages that they're not visiting? Um, that's one of the features I really like on MailChimp. When I put different links on there, I can tell which yeah. links people actually use and which ones they ignore. So, John, make a note, put it in the chat box, analytics. And I'll cover analytics next time. Um, everybody's got analytics. So, Weebly's got it, Wix's got them, Squarespace. Them. And the second piece is you can always attach Google Analytics to any website for free. It's Google. And that way you'll see, so I have a Bible page. Am I getting any hits on that? Uh, so let's say that's really, that's really working, but I look at the spirituality page and say, eh, not so much. So that tells me I should promote it, I should lift it up, I should put something on the front page about it, et cetera, et cetera. So analytics are really helpful, but just realize that analytics, um, you have to look at them over time. So I tell people, look at, you do analytics, Look at the first four months compared to the next four months. And then within a year, you'll see patterns. But it definitely tells you what's trending, what's not. A program that is working or a resource working, resource that's not, you can, it just, it just gives you that really valuable feedback because people can tell you they love it, but if they don't ever go there, what good is it? So this, the analytics really helps. But I'll, I'll walk through and I'll show you the Weebly analytics next time, just show you how that, how it works. Um, I had a design meeting around a project website project I was doing 
that we wanted to evaluate two, a year's worth of use. And, and Google Analytics lets you look at a whole year. I could tell which site sections of the site were getting the most hits and which sections weren't. And so we had to decide maybe we should put more effort into these three areas because that's where people's interests are, not so much in these areas. So analytics are really important. And they're all free. They all come built in or you just attach Google Analytics and Google Analytics tell, even tells you what they had for lunch while they were visiting the website. I mean, it just, it's so specific, right? How long they spent, all that kind of stuff. I'm less concerned with length of time on a, on, on a faith formation website. I'm more concerned with where they go because I want them to spend more time interacting and that's gonna happen in social media formats or online classroom formats that it's gonna happen on the website. You're not building a website to be an online classroom. Other thoughts, questions? Do you have some clarity about what you'll be doing between now and December and not pulling your hair out? <laughs> I do have a question. Right. Um, it's, it's not really a question, it's a geeky thought. In that, sure. Because I've been in administrative mode here. And just thinking at some point, our, our denominations are gonna catch up with the realities and not just ask for numbers of members, but numbers of participants in some way. So those analytics will be really important to say um, that we are reaching out. We're not dying here. We're, we don't have as many people in the pews, but we're doing faith formation in other ways. Yeah. Uh, the, your footprint will become bigger because you'll have a digital presence. Yeah. Uh, because you'll start doing programming out in the community, in people's homes, literally. Um, and so this is a way to, and, and you'll be able to, the, here's the nice thing. I didn't show you the, the uh, you'll see the parenting webinar later. You just go to families at the center. But one of the strategies I did for the, for the parent website was a monthly parent webinar. And the line was, stay at home, we're coming to you. And you could use Zoom or something like that. From nine to 10, First Wednesdays every month. Well, I know exactly how many people we're reaching. Is they have to sign up. And I'll get the list of the people who are just like us are online. Uh, or the click-throughs if I put it on a video. So I have all those kind of analytics. Well, what's going to happen over, over the course of a year is if my content's good, and it will be. I'm going to invite great speakers in. It's going to be short. It's going to be at home. Put your feet up. Have a cold beer. Watch the video. Um, I'm going to reach people through the network of people saying, hey, this, this was great last night. Watch it. So I've got the people who came at a fixed time, but I have people who come all year long. When you start aggregating those numbers, it can be very impressive. Um, so we have to teach everybody in our communities how to count again. Because the new metric is how do you engage people, connect with people, relate to people where they are, not how do many people you get into the pew on Sunday. I think we should emphasize worship is central to our lives as Christians, and we gather weekly. But if that's the only metric, we're going to be very, very frustrated. You know? And I always point, this was, um, uh, I forget Amanda's question before, but, uh, um, or, or Pamela's question. I always point to the end of the Gospel of Matthew where Jesus doesn't say, get people to come to church on Sunday. Jesus says, go out in the ends of the world, proclaim the good news, and keep that, I want to keep that in front of people. It's a both and. It's physical and it's online. It, the beauty of this approach is it's both and. You know, you're not stopping, you're integrating, incorporating. Um, so as you build out your networks, Take the good things you're doing and put them into those categories and then start asking, even if you just started with, how do I extend Sunday worship all week long? How do I extend vacation Bible school all year long? Think of the website you'd start building if you just did the extension strategy only. Just did that one strat before you started anything new. Over the course of the next two years, you could say, let's flip the classroom on that. Let's try this approach. In other words, you can start playing around with all these different approaches because you've got a platform to do them on. That's the key. And all the, pass, all the, pro, all the websites allow you to password protect sections of the website. 
or you use an online classroom like the kids do at school, Edmodo, uh, Schoology. You could use an online platform which is safe and secure. You don't have to worry about the kids, anybody infiltrating it. Parents have the password, kids have the password. So we can keep kids safe. Um, that's not the issue. Um, and when we want a closed discussion, you set up a Facebook group by invitation only. The beauty of this is there's people in your church right now who could manage your social media presence because they do it anyway. They're always on social media, all right? There's people who design websites. Teachers in schools put up websites. The Boy Scout leader puts up a website. The Girl Scout leader puts up a website. You know, it's, heck, third graders put up websites. Um, so that's where, when you're worried about technical expertise, I think you have a church that has the technical expertise. The faith formation expertise is what you have. I mean, you're not going to trust people necessarily to go through and pick the best Bible study program or to, or to look at digital content and decide which is the better thing to put online that reflects our, our own tradition, our history, our practices. You're going to do that. So when you're thinking about this, our expertise is often in the content experiences, faith formation side. It doesn't need to be in the technical side. Actually, the technical side is the easiest to get in terms of asking people in our congregation. Or at worst, find the one person, every church has this person, who everybody owes a favor to, who knows everybody. And all I gotta say is, we need somebody to help us with a website, all of a sudden people up here, yeah, Joe said I gotta help you with this, you know? He, you know, he paved my yard last year, you know, whatever. You know, you get the general drift. Find the person who is the, who is the connector in your community. Remember, and some old people design websites, you know, so it's not an age thing. It's a, it's a competence thing. So other questions. Check out Weebly. It's just simple and easy. And I can help you with it. But if, if, you, if you know Wix or have somebody who knows how to use Wix or Squarespace, it's fine to use those as well. I'm kind of platform neutral. Um, I am open over the next you know, six, seven weeks. If you want a one-on-one -on -one time to talk on the phone or to do a face-to-face -face or to look at something or help you with web design, I'm happy to do it. Just the basics, the essentials. Um, I'm happy to help you with your network. Just ask for what you need, okay? Um, between now and our, our right before Christmas, I know my travel schedule is not as bad, and so I'm around. So we can find, always find a half hour to connect um, and I'd be happy to walk you through how to do some of this, or if you get stuck, just send me an email. I, I, I said this in the last group, and they actually took me up on it. So don't get bogged down. Ask for the help that you need as you move ahead. That's what I'm here to do. So just say, hey, look, I got this far. What do I do next? And let me know. If you're using Weebly, I can tell you some of the tricks of Weebly and some of the things never to do on Weebly. Um, so just let me, let me know how it can help. Um, but you shouldn't have to pay any money for Weebly, Wix, or Squarespace. Get one of those trial offers just so you start playing around with it, and then you can decide whether you want to continue that or not. I did mention uh, a website that was a whole church website. Um, let me just wrap up with this. I've just got a couple of minutes, so hold on a sec. And I just want to show you one that was a good example of um, – This, I don't have this on a list, so you'll have to make a note of this. Uh, it's St. Paul's uh, Episcopal in Duluth, Minnesota. I'm hoping this is it. Let's see. Yes. So this is St. Paul's Episcopal Church, Duluth, Minnesota. Um, this, is the, this is the website for everything. And so when you get to children, look. This is the children's page. It's clear it's children. The photos are children. All the programming is there, but if you want, the drop down menus have the home activities, parables, uh, just for kids, etc. Let's go to youth. Okay, it's, it's youthy. It's got a youthy picture. It's gotta be teen. Someone's upside down, you know, you know, it's teenagers. 
This is the things that we're doing. So this is kind of the info page. There's some resources down here. But if you look at the drop down menu, she's got something just for confirmation, um, which has a site all to itself. And she's got, and the way Sue has designed this, she has online sessions that right here. Then she has families. These look, it looks pretty familiar. So my family website, Families of the Center, just imagine that this, these are now drop down menus. as opposed to one dedicated site. So what Sue has done, Sue Van Oss is the director of faith formation. What Sue has done is she has put together the church website along with her faith formation content. So she's probably not managing anything here under worship, the worship minister is. She's probably not managing anything under service. This is the service committee at the parish. And then, this is the, about the church, not about faith formation. So that's, it's St. Paul's Episcopal, let's see what the website address is, St. Paul's faithformation.org, but it's the whole church. So that's an example where you just put everything under one umbrella, and that works really, really well. Last question before we break. I realize you're totally overwhelmed, but it's okay. You've got, uh, Leaf will have, uh, Leaf will upload uh, probably by Friday, the PowerPoint, the video, um, the design PowerPoint is the actual PowerPoint. So if you work with your team, you could actually show the steps on the PowerPoint. Um, if you need any assistance, design of the network or, or the website, just send me an email, okay? Uh, we'll set up a time to talk. We'll do a web conference on Zoom, whatever you need. Um, but I want to make sure that you don't get bogged down and you get an example up there. Um, when, we, when we reconnect in December, uh, I'm going to ask each of you just to share your progress, meaning put up the website, share your progress on that, tell us about that, and um, we'll develop a list of the, all the links so you can access each other's website as you go. Realize... Five, four more courses after this, not the leadership course, but the next four courses will be adding more content to your network, intergenerational family, life cycle, and missional content. So you're not, we don't expect it to be done, but just begin. So far, so good. I'll see you after Thanksgiving. So happy Thanksgiving. It's coming quicker than any of us want to, to admit. So. Um, stay in touch. Let me know what questions you have. Uh, thanks so much for being part of today. Um, you know, keep doing good work. Thanks. Be well. Thank you. Bye.